Hi, welcome back to System Administration. Today we're gonna look at Security Onion. Actually, it's just a download of Security Onion straight from the Security Onion website. The uh, username is Onion, the password is Password. We have added it to our virtual machine. We're gonna make a couple of changes here. So we're gonna go over in Settings. Inside of Settings, we're gonna go to Display right here. On Display, we're gonna make sure it's full, um, all the RAM we can put on that display. We're gonna go over to system. On system, we're going to increase the base memory. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and make it 8192. So give it 8192 meg, so eight gig. Uh, be sure we got at least two processors on there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in four processors if we can. There we go. Pop in four processors. Acceleration should be default, yep. And we'll go through and check bi-directional. Fantastic, so we got that going on. Let's go ahead and power this machine on. And I will drag it over to the right window. It is starting up CentOS. Now the CentOS installation can take you about 30 minutes depending on your hardware. So you have to watch out for that. Hopefully uh, you got some faster hardware out there and you'll be able to knock this out pretty fast. So it won't be too bad. But right here we're gonna log in as onion and password. Login as onion and password. It says, hey, do you wanna set this up? I'm gonna go ahead and change the view here. So I'm gonna go over to the view and I'm gonna make this about 175%, make it nice and big. And we're gonna say, yes, continue. We're gonna choose install on this one. Now I do have two interfaces selected. So I do have two interfaces on the machine and click, if I go over here for security onion, I go to settings, then you can see that in the network, I do have uh, a uh, NAT adapter and an internal network int net adapter already selected on there and so I'm, I'm not gonna really mess with that but we're gonna say yes we're gonna install so choose okay get to the right screen there okay we're gonna choose the import distribution here I'm, I'm sorry the install type import because we're just gonna be importing pcap files and log files we're just be doing that if you want to get a good evaluation choose the eval right there it is uh, something we can check out all the settings the standalone allows you to, well, actually you can choose standalone with, well, air gap, I should say with this one. Over here, it makes you agree to this licensing agreement. And after talking with their lawyers, they say, don't call back, we don't wanna to talk to you anymore. So we're gonna say, yeah, all right, well, we'll go ahead and try to agree. Um, over here for security onion, let's just call it the onion, the onion. So we got the onion there. It says, please select your management, Nick. Which one do I wanna pick? Uh, let's pick the second one. So we'll pick the second one right there and go, okay. Uh, we want DHCP on this. So we're gonna say, okay, on that. We're gonna say, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, try to try to initialize DHCP and all that good stuff. So maybe, maybe it's doing something. Maybe it's ignoring me, I don't know. Is it? Hello? Yeah, I th it's thinking. You can tell it's thinking. Yeah, that's one of the things with the installation. Might take a little time. The, uh, if you can see the virtual machine, the lower right-hand corner down here, the uh, you can see that it's not it's not really doing anything there. So there's no light, which is not the most encouraging thing. But hey, you know maybe maybe it's in the background, doing something in the background there. There we go. We got some pro progress here. Saying network's unreachable. Network's unreachable. Oh, I bet that second management inter interface is the one that's trying to use. So what we're gonna do is right control, pop out of that, pop over to VirtualBox. Well, first of all, let's make sure it, it didn't get connection. No, it didn't. Uh, go over to VirtualBox here. And on that, I'm just gonna go to settings and go over to network, NAT, and instead of internal, I'm gonna make that bridged. And we'll just make that bridged right there and say okay with the bridged hopefully i'll be able to do dhcp in the future um right now because we couldn't do it that's the kind of error you get so <sighs> sadness envelops us and uh, we have to move on so well there we go so let's go ahead and we're gonna restart that machine walk through this process again and maybe it'll work this time Come on, security onion. 
Come on, security onion. Okay, we're going to log in as onion. Oops. Onion and password. And yes, I would like to get this thing installed. So let's go down import. Okay, it's called the onion. That sounds great. Management Nick, we'll choose the second one there. Go okay. We'll use DHCP and say okay. Uh, yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. So there we go. We're going to do a standard installation, not air gap. So we're going to choose standard there. We have a direct connection to the internet. So we're going to choose direct, not proxy. And we're going to let this thing run. This can take a little bit of time. So uh, once again, depending on your hardware, this can take, well, it actually can take up to about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, depending on your hardware. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to get this done in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause this and come back. Okay, it's asking for your home networks now. So if you see that right there, we're going to say, yeah, that looks good. Um, it says internet email address. We'll just say admin. Say, oh, God, admin at the onion. There you go. Oh, dot com. There we go. Password. 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 Over here, uh, we're going to connect my IP address because we're not going to set all that other stuff up. Like for your NTP. Uh, sure, go ahead. That's going to be your network time protocol. So to keep your time correct, which is very important for when you're doing log analysis or any kind of packet dumps. Well, let's see. Do you want uh, security onion allow to allow other machines? Yeah, go ahead. I range, we'll say one, two. Dot one six eight dot zero dot zero slash twenty four. We'll go okay, and it's going to run now, possibly for another twenty minutes or so. Okay, it looks like the installation is finished. Let's carry on. Okay, it's rebooting back up. Okay, we see the lines going across the bottom of the screen there. Getting started. Well, that will run just a second, then we'll log in. And so we're going to log in here as the onion. And the password. Okay, now the machine's up and running. Let's go ahead and look. We'll do a netstat-nlt. See if we got some services running, which we do. And let's go ahead and verify our IP address. Now, the Red Hat machines do an IO config here. Let's see if we got this. make this just a little bit smaller so it fits on my screen there we go let's see what our IP address is we've got a 173 on there so we're going to go ahead and try that 173 okay we have that 173 we have a security risk, it says. Let's go ahead and accept that risk and continue. We have the email here, which we said admin at theonion.com and password. And I'm going to say don't save. And there you go. So now we're up right there at the onion. It talks about customizing this page as you want to. If you want to go through and do that, this is uh, getting this page up and running so we can see all of the little settings in there. And we can use whatever we need to use inside of Security Onion. 
Okay, once we have all that installed, we're going to pop right over and we're going to grab a PCAP file here from the Fallout campaign. So I'm going to right click that and I'm going to just go ahead and choose Copy Link. So I'm going to copy link for that and pay attention to what my IP address is. It's 192.168.0.173. I'm going to open up a shell to that. So I'm going to just go ahead and log into that. All right, so now I've logged into it. Now that I'm on the system here, I'm gonna go ahead and wget that path that we just uh, that we just saw there. Let me make this a little bit larger for you. So I grab that file. You can see we've got the, the file now over on the system. If I look in the directory here, we've got that file inside uh, my home directory as onion. And now I'm going to unzip that file. So the unzip right there, the 2019. Asking for the password. The password is infected. So inflating. So let's see. There we go. We've got the PCAP file there. Now, um, at this point, we're going to go over and we are going to import that. Uh, let's see. So we're going to use uh, SO import. Let's see if we get that right there for a PCAP. <coughs> and we're going to try to Im import. Come on. Autocomplete. Um, we're going to try to import that PCAP right there. So let's see. Oops. Let's see if we can go ahead and do that. Yes. How to do sudo on that. And of course, my password is password. So let's go ahead and do that. See if that will work. Make sure that this script doesn't fail on us. It's possible for it to fail, but let's hope it doesn't. So we're going to go through. Once we finish with this, we're going to pop right back over to the home page and we're going to go to hunt. So once you know how to do that, <clears throat> you know how to go in, log into the onion there, go w get the file that you want, unzip it, which, you know, if it's password protected, type the word infected, go ahead and import that, and I'll give you my history. So I have my history right here. In fact, I'll copy that, and I'll throw that in the uh, description. So that that's the history right there, and then we're gonna pop back over to our web interface. On the web interface now, we're going to click on this hunt and we're going to try to uh, go ahead and and view that uh, that PCAP file. Or actually, let's go ahead and use the built-in functionality here and we're going to grab the, the link that it gives us. <clears throat> your link will vary, so go ahead and make sure you copy your link. I'm going to copy that link there and I'm going to paste that into the website and it's going to take us right back over here. Paste and go. And there we go. So now we've got that in there. You can see over the dashboard, we've got the, the PCAP loaded and we can go look at that and see what we have on that, on that PCAP file. So at this point, let's go ahead and make ourselves familiar with what's going on here. So we can click through this file. We can go through and check it out. We can see the import ID that 08, we're ending with 263 or 63 at the end. Um, we can go through, check all the settings that are involved there. We can click on hunt over here. And let's see if we can pull down, pull down our file there. We're going to try to pull it up. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. Going to the new one's supposed to make this really simple for me. Need the the import ID on that, so come on. All right, fine. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna pop in the import ID in this, so so that import ID, which I don't remember what it was. It was let's, let's go back over here. Maybe I can copy and paste it out of here. It easier. No, I can't. Let's, there you go. Six three. Got that. And you don't have to click copy on there, but I'm doing that so you can see it on the screen. Um, and if you're running Linux, then you can just go ahead and pop right into that and when you uh, import dot ID sorry import dot ID 
when you do it and you highlight something you can just middle click so if you middle click it will paste it in there so let's do a group by um, group by event dot module and we'll do event dot data set let's see if we can get that to come up all right we got the import ID to pop up there so let's see what we can get out of this and see if it, uh, anything come in and we're not going to do the last 24 hours we'll say the last 360 months there we go okay so I did have to change a few things this is an older image so I did say last 360 months just to throw some time in there and uh, now you can see that we've got Zeke showing up and Shurikata is showing up and uh, so there are fewest occurrence etc and we can go through and and go through these and you can look at these and graph these however you want um, so you can break it down and then start playing with it at this point um, if you've got a um, something that you're trying to accomplish then go for it you know go ahead and do your thing walk through whatever you need to to walk through there to make sure that you're getting done what you need to get done <clears throat> but this is it right you've got the uh you've got everything popped in now everything is uh everything is running so there's like nothing nothing that we're missing at this point so if you want to run through and look at any aspect you can pull up any aspect of this data. So we'll try to do an example um, with this data set right here. Given I've never worked with this particular data set, so this is the first time I've imported this PCAP file um, inside here. So let's go ahead and see what kind of options we have with this particular data set. So let's go ahead and pop down to, uh, we'll do Elastic Alerts. And on Elastic Alerts, uh, Elastic Alerts did not uh, grab grab information off of it there that's unfortunate for us but we'll have to uh, go ahead and look at a couple of other options so let's see what we got anything interesting we can pull off alerts okay uh, basic alerts we got some alerts in there so you can see it's going through and it's showing us some alerts on that. Oh, let's see what we got. We got anything fun in there? Uh, da, 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 hunt, drop down. We've got some malware command and control activity detected. So you can go through these. You can look at those and, and see the details on those in Shurikata, uh, in Se uh, Security Onion right here. So you can break it down and you can look at each one of those events as you need to. So whatever, whatever you need to search for, you can just search for it right in there. If there's any specific alert that you need to find, of course, you can look for specific alerts. Uh, as far as the ways to look at the information itself, there are a, a lot of options there. And you can see that it gives us a really nice, a, a really nice, uh, graphical interface for interfacing our data now you may enjoy uh, going through with Wireshark and, ri and ripping some information out or some other tools but in this case what this is going to help you with is it's actually going to pull out malware activity and it's going to show you that hey look something negative has occurred and it's going to it's going to break down how that actually occurred in there so you'll be able to, to see that inside of inside of the packet capture itself so any more information you want pop up here you know you can go ahead and look at the events like event data center uh, data set alert group by event module if you want to uh, you can look at event categories uh, let's see well other kind of neat things we have in here Yeah, there are a lot of great options built into it 
right off the bat. So if you look at all these, you can just see that there's it's got a lot of great options built into it. Um, here, I just went off the screen. Uh, right off the bat, very nice. If we want to see, let's see what we got. Status good failure, whatever. If you want to blank that out, refresh this. Just make sure we've got the time put in there. Go ahead and hunt. And it's, it's a little problem with me here. Let me refresh this. Okay. So I've got this. Uh, I've got apparently 93 to 2023 in there. So we do have a lot of time. Um, we've, we can go down. We can see the CNC check in. Suspicious zip file name. We can go through and look at all this information here. In fact, we can go over here. Let's just say, uh, give me a 50 per page. Where are the filters? Yeah, there you go. So we can go through, see this command and control check-in and everything else right there in, uh, in the system. So you can walk through it, through a timeline and, and break down whatever information you're actually trying to recover here. which is great information on this. You can see where it's coming from, where it's going to, what time it happened, what it was, uh, the, the post message here, HTTP, you know, whatever might be related to it. So we've got Windows XP Vista, etc. So, you know, it's, it's got, there is a lot of information here. So whatever you want to recover, you can go through and recover. It just depends on, on what you're supposed to recover or what you're looking for. And so, <clears throat> based on that, you'll want to go through and try to pull that information out. So if you want to look at something like, let's say you've got some kind of information stealer, then you can look over here, we got a stealer data exfiltration. There is the OSCE right there. So you know, we can investigate this one if we want to. We can go through and find the different packets that are inside the system. We can pull out whatever we want to uh, pull out related to any of these. Ooh, cool. Nice little case option there. So as you see that information, you can walk through, grab it with the, uh, the different rule categories or in the rule name, find out where it is and, uh, and, and pull that stuff up there. So let's go over rule name here. And I'll open this up. I'm going to try to pull up everything. And that way we can see it all. So over on the... Uh, where am I? There we go. De data exfiltration. Let's go over that one right there. We're going to go ahead and drill down on that one. Expand that. And you can see the data exfiltration that was going on right there. Let's drop on down. <clears throat> Let's see if we can find the rule name on here. There we go. And you can see the rule name right there where it's got the ET malware, VIDAR, RK right there. So you've got that. Then you can pop on down from there <clears throat> and you can see the uh, kind of what was going on with this traffic itself. So if you want to see where the traffic was going, uh, we can we can look at that. You know what system it was on. You can you can look at that. So whatever you want to drill into, that information is is available to you. But beyond that, I mean, there are about an, an unlimited number of options here. There are thousands of different things that you can do with this. So I'm just going to leave it at that and say, whatever you're supposed to do, then, you know, do it. Hope that this helps and I look forward to you know, maybe talking to you in the future.